Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced and welcome to this video series on learning how to work with React Router. I am using React Router. This is going to be 6.4 or above um, because those include the data routers, which is what I'm going to specifically focus on. But essentially what React Router is going to do is going to allow us to conditionally render routes or conditionally render components based on the URL that's in the browser. Okay, that's all it's really doing. So it's not really traditional routing like you would with like Express.js or some sort of backend framework where you're basically creating a server and then that server has a different response depending on what the URL requested is. In this case, the idea is that you're not sending any requests to a server because you're creating a single page application. So everything's happening in the front end, everything's already in the browser. We just need a way to kind of give users that feel that when the URL changes, what they see changes. So essentially what's happening is that React Router uses the context API that's built into React to track what URLs in the browser and being able to, and then uses that context to pass the information about what the URL is to all the different components that we'll learn about. And it allows us to know, hey, render this if the URL is this, render this if the URL is that. Okay, that's essentially what it does. And we'll examine that more deeply. In this first video, what we need to do is just set up router, okay? So here I have a blank V project. So I did that with npm in that V. So here I have a readme. Well, I'll document things. So started, you know, uh, React router lessons. Okay. And then we're getting started with our setup. And again, the very first thing I did is I just created a new V project. So that was just npm create V. Created a React project. So again, basically, I just selected a React project, not TS, not TypeScript. Okay, then I CD'd into that folder, ran npm install to install the dependencies, and now here we are. So the next thing I have to do is install React Router. Okay, and the install React Router, that means we're gonna have to do an npm install for that library, which is React Router DOM. Okay, so again, this readme will be in this particular folder, which you can find in the repository of all my 2024 lessons, which you can find the link to through the video description. Okay, so here we go. Um, okay, so let me install React Router myself. So let me open up my terminal and do an npm install React Router DOM. Awesome. Okay, next step is now that we have React Router DOM, we need to configure router, which takes a you know a few steps. Um, the way I like to do this is here in our source folder. What we need to do is we're going to create a new folder for our router. So for all the little files we'll need for router, we'll put that in there. Okay, and essentially in this file, basically in this folder, we're going to create three files. Okay, um, we're going to create our um, routes.js, which is going to be where we kind of track all of our routes. Actually, let's call it router.js, rename router.js. That's where our router will be. A new file with our actions.js, so all our action functions, which we'll learn about what they are in the future, will go in there. And same thing with our loaders. Okay. And then generally, you know, if you start having lots and lots of loaders, then you start breaking them up in their own files. Maybe make a loaders folder and an actions folder instead. Okay. But here we go. So now here in the in the router folder, the first thing I need to do is really kind of set up my router. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to import um, a couple things from React Router DOM, which is going to be specifically create browser router. This is the thing that's going to create our router. But we're going to want to express a router using uh, JSX because it's just more intuitive. So we need another function here that's called create routes from elements. Okay, with those two functions, we're good. We're also going to want our route component. Okay, so we can define our routes. And with that, we're pretty good. Okay, also, we're going to need something sort of be our initial component since the app component generally is the initial component. Let's just grab that. So I'm going to just import app okay from which should be a folder above dot dot slash app okay cool 
So now what we're going to do is we're going to declare our router. So const router equals create browser router. Okay, and then we're going to export that router. Export default router. That's essentially the file. But again, this function here needs to receive the router, like the list of routes to create the router. Now, again, I could just pass an object um, detailing my routes. That would work. But I think using JSX to define my routes is much easier. So what I'm going to do here is we're going to use create routes from elements. Okay, and then here, now what I'll be able to do, oops, cancel. Okay, now what I can do from here is actually start using JSX to define my routes. Okay, so I want to do define my initial route. Okay, and basically uh, these routes have a few props. So the idea is first we need to define the path. Okay. Okay, in this case, it'll just be empty because it's the main route. Uh, just to be extra expl explicit, let's just make sure that's a slash. And then we need to define an element. Okay, and this is going to be the element that, that this route shows, which will be our app component. So we just pass it app. Okay. Okay, and we'll just compress that as JSX expression. Okay, perfect. And uh, yeah, so this is set for now. Okay, so again, basically we have a route that's our main route, and which we'll work with from there. And then I'm gonna go attach this router to my applications. For that, I need to head over to the main.jsx. If you're using create react app, that's probably gonna be index.js. So I'm gonna head over here. Okay, and I'm gonna go import my router. Okay, so import router from create router. Then I'm going to import uh, from React router, um, boop, 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 which should be React or router provider. Okay. And essentially, this router provider is what's going to kind of monitor the browser and monitor the, like the URL bar here. So essentially what it's always doing is just capturing what the URL and the URL bar is. And then all these components that are inside the router, like the route components, they're able to monitor, oh, okay, from the provider, we can get that URL and we can determine whether we are rendering or not. Okay, do we render the element that we were given or do we just kind of sit back and relax? So that's essentially kind of the high level of how this is working. So I need to provide this provider in this case. So I'm gonna just put that right over here. And we're just going to say router provider. Okay, and we need to provide that router provider with a router, which we have imported, router. And there we go. So now if I start this, it should look like a normal React app. So if I do npm run dev, because I'm using the Vite uh, template. Oh, looks like I have some error. Let's see here. Router path. These build a little bit of file currently set to JS, but it must be, oh. I accidentally need to set it to JSX in order to use JSX because I'm using the Vite template. So in that case, it is they do enforce the need to write JSX. So I'm going to rename this JSX, which means I'm going to have to change it in here. Actually, I should probably want to have need to. Okay, Control C. Let's try that again. Okay, now it looks like it's working fine. Okay, local host. 5173. Okay, and the app component should be loading up, but I'm not currently seeing it. So let me open up the terminal just to make sure this caught router is not defined. Ooh, okay, I think I have a typo in my router.js because this should be route, not oops. This should be route, not router. Okay, and there we go. Okay, it's working. Okay, now just to show you what I was talking about before, how that provider component is providing all the information, if I use React DevTools, okay, you'll see that there's all these router providers. Okay, basically, they're kind of, if you go to the main router provider, and I go open this up, and I go look at the information inside of it, okay, you see that it's tracking all this state. Okay, all this state is being distributed to those individual routes. So in this case, if I look in here, I open up one of them. Okay, I can see... Blockers, prevent, navigation. Here's kind of probably what I'm looking for. 
navigation, location undefined, because right now there's no URL. So let me actually change, let me add something to the end of the URL. So let's say slash cheese. Okay, let me go back to that router provider, see if we can find that cheese state location. And you can see that the path name is slash cheese. Okay, so these details, again, this provider provides all this information and all these other components that you see in the tree receive it. So like here, we let's find our route. Okay, so here's our uh, route, data routes, default error component. Oh, we have it. Well, yeah, because we don't have a route for that. That's why we're seeing the default error component. Okay, but you'll see this route. So that's the route provider or the route. What it's doing, it's going to receive the information from the contacts. So see, it has all that route information in there. And that's how it's able to keep track of what it's matching. Like, does it match any of the routes that we've defined here? In this case, it doesn't. So router has this default 404 page. You can create your own custom one. Um, that'll be something we'll visit later on. But just so you can see, like, it's essentially just using React and the React the pieces of React to make it work. It's just basically using context to keep track of what is the information that the browser is using for its location. And then these route components can then determine whether they're rendering or not. That's essentially how it works. So essentially what we'll do is we'll keep defining these route components to define multiple routes, which will then allow us to kind of construct um, our, our, our different pages. So I'll see you in the next video. Have a great one. Ciao.